Hello and welcome to another episode of the Cancelled series, because nothing bolsters an existential crisis quite like imagining a world of what could have been. And while in the past we've covered all sorts of Pixar and Disney, video games and Sony, we've only really touched on DreamWorks once, and I think it's worth doing it again. Though actually I didn't come up with this myself, this was suggested on our Discord by Woodsy and Ryan120, so thank you to you two. Honestly, it's pretty rare getting a suggestion for something that isn't the terrible series, so if you want to get an edge on getting picked, then maybe consider more of the other series. Still, yes, today we're tackling one of the most popular cancelled projects by DreamWorks, and really, I'm surprised I haven't heard of it myself. But what makes it so special? Why is it so popular? How was it gonna turn out, and what went wrong? Come join us today as we revisit an alternative timeline of a DreamWorks artistic masterpiece or two. So this film is called Me and My Shadow. It's a real Peter Pan story without the Peter Pan part. Uh, I mean, it's just that one character dynamic. The production was first announced back on December 10th, 2010, and the part that really hooked people was the artistic concept heralding the entire thing. You see, this wasn't just a standard animated movie with a cool plotline or anything. This was an industry-shaking idea of blending together the at-the-time transitional crisis of the animation industry together. You may remember the Princess and the Frog film back in 2009, or Sinbad in 2003. Those were two 2D, the last of Disney's and DreamWorks' animated movies before, well, you've seen the state of animation now. And though we clearly now know where things went, whether people like it or not, the fact remains that this film was intended to still hold on to the 2D ideals in a more collaborative way, as it would have fully blended CGI animation alongside hand-drawn animation. By the simple to think of, yet complex to execute idea of a man shadow interacting with his 3D self. Honestly, I can understand the hype behind such a concept. That's a great pitch. And would turn some heads if not just from the fact that DreamWorks hasn't done a 2D film since the likes of Sinbad way back in 2003. So with us starting on the cusp of the decade, the release window for the film was set for March 2013 and things were going fairly standardly. People started getting signed on to roles such as Bill Hader before he got all involved in Inside Out or Bob's Burger or all the other things he's been in, cast as The Shadow. There was also Kate Hudson as the romantic interest before she was on Glee, and then there was Josh Gad as the protagonist. Believe it or not, he did exist before his Olaf role. Whoa. And as for director, the slot was given to Mark Dindal, who not only also developed the film's concept and story, but previously worked on Chicken Little and The Emperor's New Groove, and later... Uh... According to IMDB, he does the occasional story artist work now. I guess. So with the soon-to-be big names on board, where was the script going? Well, it was slated to go a little something like this. Stanley Grubb is an ordinary human who works an everyday job and is overall a bit of a dull dude. Very timid, shy, and not really bold on tackling adventures or breaking the rules. And his shadow wants to help him by breaking the rules of the once-secret shadow world. When a crime in the shadow world puts both of their lives in danger, Shadow Stan is forced to take control of Stanley. They go on a massive adventure to investigate the crime and stop a shadow villain from leading a rebellion that would lead to shadows taking over their human counterparts in the human world. And by the end of the film, presumably, Stanley would have grown some confidence as well. Also, he had a love interest named Heidi. This goes on a bit of a tangent, but I'm still on board. Imagining Owl City performing underneath is a tad strange, but that's a confirmed thing too. Having a whole realm of the shadows isn't exactly how I would have anticipated such a premise, but it would have allowed for a lot of creative imagery. As is having a 2D character move across a 3D plane, which is interesting enough, but from some of the footage that remains of the film, there were plans to get far more inventive with the spacing of these two-dimensional characters, as well as how they interact with light. The the more you try to break down the possibilities of what a shot can do in this world, the more investing this project sounds. No wonder all sorts of people were hyped. And even the staff were. The most vocal of the bunch there come in the form of Matt Williams, a veteran animator who prior to this worked on The Princess and the Frog, Coraline, the Spongebob movie, Looney Tunes Back in Action, and later Claws and Space Jam 2. He's gone on to say about the project that it featured, definitely the most talented animators I have ever worked with in my career. It was great. A small crew where we were all given a certain level of freedom. I was going to be the lead on the villain of the film, but sadly it was cancelled before I could start my first shot. That villain, by the way, was rumoured to be Tom Hiddleston, just scratching the surface of his time as Loki, but I don't think that was ever confirmed. Of course, while most of the film exists only in our imagination, there are scattered throughout the realms of the internet a handful of test clips that can help stitch together the vision of the film at varying stages of development. You've probably seen a handful already, I gotta be cautious because they come with copy strikes sometimes, but even still, 
still, I might have learned about this film a little late since the go-to thread on Twitter has been mostly taken down at this point, but I'll do what I can to dig up the rest if it's possible. But you can see some clear ideas in places, with Shadow Stan looking to be a new take on the genie with his transfigurative properties, as well as 2D techniques and approaches that predict some of the stuff we would see in later movies. Though actually, it's been interesting to see the more I dig up footage. Like, sure, the shadow changes that one time, but a lot of other clips he remains more on model, just stretched all the time. Or look at this clip where he's in the shadow realm and gets split in half because of Stanley in the real world where he's not even seen. That's cool. I guess happening when no shadows are cast at all, as some clips show Stanley can hide his shadow by turning off lights. Also, there's all sorts of imagery relating to the town and a motif of light bulbs, which is obviously the perfect location and idea for this kind of film's premise. And part of the technologies that were planned for this ambitious project was to project this 2D animation onto a distorted 3D space to distort along the new walls and angles like they do in real life, which is great. I particularly like seeing the struggle between Stanley and his shadow with the lamp projecting the lighting in different directions, or how the logic of this world is that the shadow can manipulate their real world counterpart. As we see in multiple renderings across this art and footage, it's just a cool idea. Even a short would suffice for me, honestly. As a brief other thing that did confuse me in a couple places, these characters have multiple names on the internet, sometimes referred to as Stanley and Stan, other times as Daniel and Shadow Dan. Either someone said something wrong once and it got repeated, or changes were made over time. I don't know. Figured I'd throw that out there in case I've been labeling them wrong. Still, the only other element to directly comment on is all this art. There are characters we'll never see, both in 2D and 3D, or more characteristics for the ones we faintly know about. Here's the big shadow monster baddie that Stan warns about in one clip. And hey, this artwork got its direct adaptation in animated form. Also, if you're liking my stuff so far, do consider subscribing. Here's our schedule for absolutely everything we're doing, along with all of our links. Or just click on hashtag as reviews beneath this video, and hang around to the end of the video for a hint on what's next. But of course, things went downhill somewhere, and the real rupture started two years later in 2012. And it started off, I guess, with what you could call a rival project within DreamWorks, Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Now this is a film I remember being advertised. While there was no direct bad blood between the two projects, they were both in development at the same time. Around this time, line recordings had started as there's several star photographs and confirmation that Josh Gad had recorded his first lines of dialogue on February 16, 2012. And when it was time to pitch both projects to DreamWorks executives, they were much more in favor of the Peabody project as a potentially successful film. In fact, in 2012, DreamWorks co-founder Jeffrey Katzenberg was shown a special screening of Me and My Shadow and stated that it just was not the $200 million movie he had wanted. So with the head honcho's opinion solidified, the release for Peabody and Shadows was swapped so that Peabody's was to come out first now. Me and My Shadow was now delayed to March 2014, the first delay of many. And further to that injury, Dindal as director was replaced by Alessandro Carloni, whose work prior included just the shark and the piano short as a director, but Sinbad, Shark Tale, Over the Hedge, and Kung Fu Panda, and How to Train Your Dragon as an animator, story artist, and supervisor so just a general DreamWorks veteran. And post this project will continue on to the future big DreamWorks projects, and Kung Fu Panda 3 as director. I gotta watch that whole series one day. Still, delays only continued further as Peabody and Sherman wasn't doing too hot, being behind on production, which delayed them onto Me and My Shadow's new slot of March 2014. And then it released, unsuccessfully. DreamWorks as a whole was suffering at this point, and so, as is the story we keep coming back to, DreamWorks underwent some corporate restructuring in 2015, shutting down an entire studio, Redwood Studio City, and laying off 500 employees too. So while in 2013, the initial delays had Jeffrey Katzenberg clarify that Me and My Shadows was not cancelled and simply put back on its development track, this time around, Jeffrey himself stepped down, and the project was officially cancelled. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! But not for long. An attempt to revive the idea came about also in 2015 and with a new big name attached to it. Master of woe and imagery, Edgar Wright popped up. 
potentially making his directorial debut for an animated movie. Just from seeing the stuff he gets up to in live action, you can just imagine the antics possible in animated form. Or maybe you can't fathom the idea at all. My mind's eye isn't really good enough for this thing, personally. Still, the project was back in a whole new form. Things were being vastly redone, as Edgar Wright had been signed on to rework the concept into a new story. It was described as being a new take on a previously developed concept about shadows, and the title Me and My Shadow was renamed to just Shadows. Maybe it wouldn't have been such a me and him tale anymore. The reason I'm so unaware of the details is because while Wright was busy working and even produced three drafts of the movie as he claimed in an interview, we never got to see it. Because by now, it was 2017. And this film can only exist for two years at a time, apparently, as DreamWorks is now to be hit by a massive buyout by Comcast. Thus, more corporate reshuffling was in order, as the goal was now to somehow incorporate NBC Universal and everything else that comes with this kind of business direction. And of course, with such a small, unproduced project like Shadows being amidst the carnage, it was quietly cancelled and never heard from again. And yet, here we are, talking about it today, because it is one of the most popular unfinished films in the anime industry. And as we said earlier, it garnered a cult following, despite not even technically existing. I mean, every animation studio has some sort of cancelled project under their rug. But, I mean, the big ones, of course, being Pixar's Newt, Sony's Popeye, and Studio Ghibli's Porco Rosso sequel, which I'm sure will cover those other two at least some point in the series. And also, DreamWorks alone has plenty of unproduced projects, but this one stands out for some reason. Maybe it's because of the demand for old-school 2D animation to return by some die-hard animation fans. Maybe it's because of the intriguing concept of blending 2D and 3D animation together like this. Or maybe it's because of some of the potentially groundbreaking techniques being introduced with some of the ideas being pushed for it. Whatever the case, DreamWorks has long since changed since the inception of this project. Undergoing two corporate shuffles changes a company, and we'll likely never see a world where this film sees the light of day as is usually the story of these cancelled projects. Of course, if Sony can revive their animated Popeye, then there's always a chance DreamWorks could do the same with their most popular unfinished IP, but I guess we'll just have to see. After all, a wholly original film from the guys isn't the most common thing in the world these days, as is the state of the industry as a whole. But let's not grovel in the shadows any longer. If you have any suggestions for which cancelled project you want us to talk about next, let us know on our Discord, come check out my other links if you want to support our extra content. My name's been Daz, you didn't really care, Next week, we're covering a terrible live action movie from a company that is notorious for bad live actions, and I'll see you in a bit.